Um, I wanted to come on here and make a easier to follow velocity tutorial because my other one was pretty rushed. So this is going to be assuming that you know the program a little bit more. Um, also I'm switching up the way that I do the voiceover. Now I'm voicing over as I edit so it, I should be able to like time it correctly but if there's any like weird noises I'm so sorry. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to open After Effects. I use After Effects CC 2020. Um, I explained this but I guess some people were kind of confused. I pay through, you got to download Creative Cloud right here. Um, and I pay $20 a month for it, but you can get crack files for it um, to get it for free. Just be careful if you're going to do that because you can get a virus on your computer very easy, so make sure you check the comments before you um, download any files on your computer. So, After Effects is going to open, it's going to look like this. I'm just going to use a new project, um, and I'm not going to put an audio in so that I don't get copyrighted, but I'll use a video and I'll show you how to do it. So, first thing you're going to do is you're going to open the Finder window right down here, and you're going to import any video. So, I use an external hard drive, and I'll just use a Chris Daniel video because I just made a Velocity for him. Um, so finding a good video, I don't know what one, this one would probably be good, okay. So then you drag and drop it into your project window over here, and then you're going to drag and drop it from the project window down to your um, composition right down here. So, someone asked the composition settings for TikTok. This is what the video saved as is, but I use 888 by 1280. Um, or actually, let's do 720 by... That's an iPhone X. Okay. So, this is what I use. And then, you're going to want to turn the volume off because right now we have like... And you don't want that so you can turn that off and then up here what I do is I type in sharpen and this should already this effect should already be built into After Effects you don't have to use any plugins or anything so then you're just gonna drag and drop the sharpen effect onto the clip and it'll be 35 that's what I use and this just makes it a higher quality clip um, so when you export it it's not quite it's not as blurry so then you're gonna go down here again on your clip and you're gonna click S to bring up scale and this way you can zoom your um, video in and you can move it around so that it like fits a little bit better just like that and make sure it's still gonna be in frame crop out the TikTok logo okay that should be good and then what I do is I right click and go to pre-compose right down here and then you want to make sure that the second circle and the first square are checked and you're going to click OK. This just pre-composes it and resizes it to the composition that you've already created. So then you're going to click this button right here and this is motion blur and it um, makes all of your layers and transitions smooth a lot easier. Smooth. <laughs> a lot smoother um, and they flow a lot easier. So you're going to click that and then you're going to turn motion blur on for this specific clip. Excuse me. Um, <laughs> for this specific clip and then you're going to want to turn the volume off. There's no volume anymore, um, but I turned it off just because the button annoys me, whatever. So then what you're going to do is, it's full speed right now, right? So you're going to um, come up here to your effects and presets window, and you're going to type in Twixter, and this is a plugin. You have to install it. Um, you can just Google, <laughs> Google, you can search up in YouTube, Twixter plugin for After Effects CC 2020, or whatever CC you have. Um, so like, Twixter for After Effects CC 2020 free installation and a bunch of videos will pop up. Make sure you read the comments so you don't get a virus on your computer, but you can get it for free. So it's right down here in um, revision plugins and I use just the normal Twixter, not the Twixter Pro or Vector Zen. So you just drag and drop the Twixter onto the Twixter effect onto the clip and then what you're going to do is over here in the effect controls window, you're going to click this button right here. And it's a little stopwatch and that sets your first keyframe. And all you're going to adjust for a velocity edit is the speed right here. You don't have to mess with anything else. It should all be good. So you're going to click the little stopwatch. And then if you click U on your keyboard, it'll bring up all the keyframes you have selected, which right now you only have Twixter. So it'll bring up this little keyframe right here. And then what I do is I start the clip at 20% 20, 20 speed. So now, as you can see, it's really slowed down and pretty smooth, whatever. So normally you would line it up with your audio and your beat drops, but I don't have an audio because I don't want to get copyrighted. So I'm just going to go about here, and then I'm going to set another keyframe, which is this button right here. So add or remove keyframe at current time. You'll click that, and it'll bring up another keyframe. 
And then you're gonna go like a couple um, frames forward and I do 150 or 200, it just depends. And then a couple more keyframes out and you'll do 20 again. And what this does is it like, so you zoom in right between this keyframe and this keyframe, it's speeding up to 150% speed. And then it slows back down. So it creates this effect right here. Um, you can drag these keyframes out to make the speed last a lot longer. So like, um, looks like that. And then you'll leave it slow for a second and then you'll click this key to add another keyframe at 20% speed and then you'll go a couple keyframes in and I'll do 200 for this one to show you and then a couple keyframes out and make it back at 20 so it speeds up and slows down which just creates a really smooth transition for speeding up and slowing down so it starts slow and then speeds up you can see there um, then we can make it go slow till here add another keyframe couple keyframes in, we'll do 200, a couple more keyframes. It's really repetitive and all you have to do is line it up with your beats um, from the audio that you're using. So yeah, um, it, it would be a lot easier to show you guys with an audio so it would make more sense. But this is just how to get those like speed jumps if that makes sense. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to shorten these because I want to um, make that spin fast so that's fast and then right about here when he starts to spin we'll add a keyframe go a couple in we'll do 200 and then we'll go to where he's fully spin to spun around and do 20 again so it looks like this so you get the idea so then we'll leave the let rest slow or actually what we can do is we can cut it right after there so control shift d and then delete or backspace on your keyboard and then um, if you click in on your keyboard it will automatically bring this little uh, work area thing right to where your current time indicator is so basically that's all that it will export is right after there and then it'll start over like this so this is what it looks like now but it's not as smooth as we want it to be so we're gonna highlight all the keyframes and we're gonna either go down to keyframe assist or and then easy ease or I'm just gonna click F9 on my keyboard um, and what that does is it just makes it a little bit smoother but we're still gonna go into our graph editor and we're gonna make it a little bit smoother so highlight all the keyframes and then click this button which is graph editor and then you're gonna highlight all of these right here and zoom in using the plus um, the plus sign on your keyboard and then you'll match your graphs to mine so you pull the front one forward and then the second one back so it creates like a jump I guess and then you'll get out of the graph editor and this is what it looks like now and obviously this would look a lot better with an audio in the background um, actually what we can do is drag this down here um, and then there's this audio, which it's not going to match up because I don't know where the beats are, but you'll get the idea. <laughs> so I, <laughs> that was actually pretty impressive. I did actually line some of them up with the beats, but um, I did not mean to do that. So see, it looks a lot better when you have an audio, but that's the basic how to do a velocity edit. And then someone asked how to export it. So what you're going to do is... Um, You'll go up here to file and then you'll go down to export and some people use add to render queue but my render queue does not work so if you pay for after effects then you get adobe adobe media encoder queue or adobe media encoder for free so i just add it to the encoder queue which brings up this and um you can do the same thing in render queue you just want to make sure your setting is h.264 so if i had after effects so if i add this to my render queue right here um, how to fix that is you'll go to right here where it says lossless and you'll go to format options and then you'll drop down animation and it might say H.264 um, if so that's what you'll click and then you'll just click render right there and it'll render out perfectly but mine doesn't have that setting so I have to do it here so then I'm just going to change the output file to my desktop so it's easier to find and then um, just letters but I would normally do like um, 
crisp velocity like that and then you'll just click this play button right here and it'll render out down here and then it'll go onto my desktop and I'll have it so that's how you do a um, velocity edit on After Effects I hope this tutorial was a little bit easier to follow than my last tutorial so yeah